Hey, Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron, and I'm here with Tom and Dom. We are back for season two of Jump Point. Uh, very, very yeah. exciting. Uh, we've got uh, some excellent episodes lined up for you this season. Uh, and today, uh, we've got a very, very exciting episode. Uh, Tom's been dying to talk about this topic. We're going to talk about the digital future of Battletech. So we're going to talk about things like augmented reality, virtual reality, how it might fit in the game, what it might look like. Uh, so lots of lots of exciting things there to hit on. Um, Tom, how excited are you to talk about this stuff? So excited. Tom Tom asked if he could wear I, his his VR headset to this uh, to this. <laughs> I have it right here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You oh really my god! Have, I live, I live in the multiverse. I mean, who doesn't? Who doesn't? In 2023, who doesn't? Uh, so, good morning, happy Sunday. Glad you guys could join us, and glad we're back. We're going to kick it off with a little ready room roundtable. Uh, so, the first, the first topic here that we're going to talk about is is digital aids, um, and do the digital aids enhance? or detract from tabletop gaming in general. And by digital aids, I mean, you know, we're used to pencils, paper, dice. Yeah. Um, so this could be anything from a dice rolling app um, to, you know, record sheets managed on a, you know, tablet or whatever, anything along those lines. Um, Tom, why don't we start with you? What is your opinion on that? Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw a line between like in-game digital aids, like when you're playing on the tabletop versus like management aids that you use like for tracking weapons and damage okay. and all that kind of stuff. Excellent. Um, yeah, just because, you know, I, I agree with one and not much with the other. So on the tabletop, I personally have not found digital aids to be helpful at all. Um, I've tried to use like an iPad record sheet app and all of that. I hate it. Um, I really appreciate paper and pencil and the ease of that even even uh rule books right it's so much easier to annotate and tab uh, a physical book than it is to scroll through a pdf so um, i'm all for physical tabletop games um i i just don't understand how they would be compelling necessarily um and, and dice rolling apps again not needed uh, it's not helpful and it also feels a little bit like why why bother playing i don't know like just yeah. play a video game so the one thing i the caveat i will say is that like during the pandemic uh you know there were some opportunities for us to play not battle tech but i think we did some D D or something right on roll 20 and then yeah and then like mm -hmm. yeah roll 20 and, and then digital dice rollers all that stuff is way easier so if you're somehow trying to bridge like a, a distance divide and play i'm all for it and then, of course, you know, for campaign management, for, you know, um, uh, company, you know, assets and stuff like that, it's awesome to have Excel and, and any other, you know, sort of collaborative platform. Yeah. So, Dom, Dom, what do you think? Yeah, I'd echo some of what Tom said there. I think the um, you have got to be careful with aids when it comes to, like, tabletop, because I think if it if it goes too far, you lose the like connectedness of what is supposed to be a real thing or like a simulator that as opposed to like a computer game which is just like wholly digital if you push it too far i think you can lose the magic which tabletop is is there for but unlike tom i actually do use like the flex app um, flex. and i it's, it, it's yeah and it's all I use I actually don't use paper uh, record sheets at all. I do it all digital. Right. The reason why it's I think Tom's correct when it comes to the like the simplicity of just having like pen and paper. But one amazing thing that Flex does is it, it like real time tells you like damage, you know, get a shoulder injury or something like that on the mech. It will then tell you exactly what penalties there are to charging and to physical combat or shooting certain weapons. Or, you know, you lose your, let's say you lose your targeting computer, it will take all those modifiers off like the sheet. Now, if you think about that in terms of an efficiency, time-saving exercise and accuracy, because I don't know about you, but I've played games where you've like, in classic, where you've 
destroyed the targeting computer and you completely forget innocently and you're still rack, racking it out at you know that minus to hit level so i think that they there is a, a scope for that for sure and then just to really echo what tom said i think the real crux of this and the advantage of it comes in like the campaign management you know if you're using things like mega mech for for campaign management which is kind of a simulator where you input all the data and then it will spit out and tell you what all the kind of rules and regs are and what you've done or even like master unit list which is just a superb resource obviously for battletech fans so yeah i think it's similar to what tom said but with a bit of a caveat i was just thinking too there could be a really cool campaign management feature where you know you generate the sheets in a in a central and send them to the player and then at the end of it it goes back in with all the updated damage and, and right you know it'd be be cool for record keeping purposes across games yeah i i agree very cool i'd like yeah, updated so, a database of your company yeah no you absolutely cool. could and and i think you know to your point though there are there are lines in the sand where I would never, I want to, the, I want the clickety clack. I want to be rolling dice. Mm. I want to, I want to, you know, I want to watch yeah. that 12 come up. I don't want to shake my phone. Like that's dumb. Like I want to, I want to roll the <laughs> dice, you know, and things like that. But in terms of the record keeping, I think I could offload some of that, but let's, let's jump to the next topic here in our ready room round table, um, which is do digital aids lead to an unfair monetization of the fan base? So Dom, you were just talking about something. I'll let, I'll let you start here. Um, so I guess it was a couple months ago at this point, right? Games Workshop yeah. made yeah. some changes, right? So let's talk about that and, and yeah. whether or not, yeah. So it's the, obviously, I suppose there is a commercial fear around this and we've seen it across other gaming systems as well. I don't want to pick on Games Workshop. I think plenty of other firms do this. But Games Workshop have, or at the time of recording anyway, they may have reversed this decision by the time this goes out, but they put their new uh, like battlefield builder or whatever you want to call it behind a paywall that you need to subscribe to uh, Warhammer Plus, which is their kind of digital channel where they do painting things and there's yeah. like cartoons on there and things like that. And I don't, I mean, we're still kind of coming fresh off this news. I would imagine the community will be quite upset about it. Because you're asking people to pay, you know, like what I'd consider a subscription service for something, you know, back in the day, like, um, you know, one of the big battle games that you could, right, that cost you $15, $20 a month or whatever it is. I think the whole point of Tabletop is that it's supposed to liberate you from that to some extent. And they're kind of trying to cash in on this. Now, yeah, yeah. And I think. And I'll say this very quickly because I don't want to take up too much time. But I think where the companies can go wrong is obviously they look at this as like a commercial opportunity, whereas I would see it as something to bring somebody into the game. And then you get the opportunities off the back of that, the commercial opportunities. So let them have, you know, like Master Unit List is a free resource to all Battletech fans. And I guarantee that if they monetize that, it would crush segments of the community because we use it all the time it would be a horrendous uh like commercial decision it would really alienate the fan base they're not they're never going to do that in battletech it's well, a completely different setup but that's effectively what games workshop have just done so let's talk about um ar and vr so tom riddle me this what is the difference for our viewers uh between augmented reality and virtual reality simple yeah so yeah very simply, like augmented reality would be like looking through a pair of glasses in the real world, like at your tabletop and having overlaid digital content on top of it. So you could have textures or, you know, markers, extra information on a unit, whatever. Um, and then VR would be a fully virtual world, like an Oculus headset where everything is digitally <laughs> rendered in a 3D environment. Right. Yeah. Very cool. So what would what would AR look like? in your in your mind what would ar look like for yeah. battletech so there's two really compelling uses of it in, in my in my head and there are some implementations of this not specific to battletech that i've seen like you know kickstarters for that probably have never been realized but um and microsoft had that that table um with their with their headset so one really cool one would be to have digital terrain um and environmental effects like imagine you want to have fog whatever oh, that's cool yeah you don't have a fog machine in your house you can do that 
um, things like <laughs> distance measuring. So it's not 1998 anymore. I gave my frog yeah. machine away. <laughs> um, so um, typically, if you're using it for like a tabletop game, what you do is you, you digitally pin the the parameters of the board so it knows how big it is um, with a camera set up and then you could even have it do things like distance measurement automatically it can even uh. tell you how far away they are um you can have action effects right so you hit somebody with an lrm and then all of a sudden with your augmented reality you see little explosions on the mech you hit it can be really cool um you could have digital sheets what about right, like in your, scanning could in you like screen? scan a mech or something and it comes up with all its stat lines or you can feed well, exactly. that damage like, in. Say, could you get that elaborate yeah, yeah, so you have like an ECM on your pilot, right? And that would give you the ability mm. with your AR nice. headset or glasses to like, yeah, see see more mm. details on a mech that could be hidden from another player. So there's a lot of cool, like, fun things. And then there's the real crunchy part mm. of you could have digitally rendered um, mech sheets, right, that only exist on the screen that you can manipulate. Yeah. Um, it would be really nice. cool. There's a lot of cool things, I think. Um, yeah. And so in that, in that sort of AR scenario, you would still have, you know, maps and mechs, physical mechs and things like physical that. Physical minis. Mm-hmm. Right. Physical yep. minis. Interesting. Yeah. And what about, what about VR? Like, what do you think that would look like yeah. for Battletech? Would that be like the pods or would that be just sit in my chair and put my glasses on? Like, what do you think that, what, what could that be? So specifically to the tabletop game of Battletech, the way that VR could be imp- implemented that's really cool is um, the ability to walk through your board, right? Like, I there could be some really awesome things where you can zoom in. So you're, you know, think about a um, like a third person view of a board, sort of a high level, but the ability to zoom in and be the same, be a human scale of a mech, walk wow. around and see, like. There's really cool things. Um, I don't know that you really gain playability except for in the the virtual play, right? Where you can play with people that aren't co-located geographically with you. Then you can, so there's two ways you could do it. You could have a virtual tabletop where everybody is avatars and you're playing with people that are remote from you in in like a normal way as if you had a board in front of you. You pick up a mini, you move the mini, or it can be fully immersive where maybe you're the size of a mech right and you you know so you can see things and yeah it could be pretty cool but that would be the way it's really a collaborative tool at that point i think would would it take away our arguments about cover like i could zoom into the cockpit of my marauder and see that your wolverine is in fact in cover finally exactly yeah that's exactly what i mean like there's some really cool things there you know yeah and like imagine the really elaborate um uh, terrain you could build and how cool that would be you know, it would be amazing, right? But then, but then you get into the realm of it's just a video game, right? Is and that's why I, I, I think yeah. the sounds idea amazing, of being, sounds fun. yeah, yeah. But but having it be mainly a collaborative tool, like you, you can imagine, like there's VR chat, right? You can walk into a room that's an open gaming room with a table set up. Somebody's yeah. waiting for a player to show up. You just walk in and say, "Oh, I'll play with you," just like an old gaming store, like a mm-hmm. virtual local mm-hmm. gaming store. It's really cool. I, I I'd imagine as well it'd be a very good teaching tool as well. You could really kind of you could do like classes to thirty people plus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, virtually this is how you actually the entire play the mechanics game. of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so and, to and me, people. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You could use this like a friend finding type tool for BattleTech players. But to me, like the AR is more compelling, and maybe that's old school me speaking. But yeah. like VR just Great. becomes like, why wouldn't I just play Mech Warrior? Right or something like that, yeah. but uh, I'll throw this out there uh, as a final point on this well, round table. The- Let let's talk about let's talk about hollow tables, Tom. All right, let's talk about is yeah. this ever going to be a thing where you know you install something on your ceiling, you have like a tabletop that maybe or or whatever, and it and it just projects everything, you know, uh, and you can move your dudes and they like you know move around and shoot to your point. Like, well, is that ever a thing? I've seen some uh, projector setups that mm-hmm. try to do that. You have an app where you can set up markers and all that kind of stuff. Um, they're really cool, but then you know there's a lot of setup involved in that 
and I, I think the AR would probably be better than mm-hmm. than like a, a physical overlay because then you have shadows when arms move inside of it. Um, all those yeah. issues with yeah. projections, right? I once right. saw I mean, something I think... similar as well. There was a, 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 so a friend of mine once put a massive flat screen TV into a, um, a yeah, like a table, and then you could just put the different landscapes up on there, which I thought was a bit of a gimmick, honestly. But it was agreed. I suppose cheap and cool. Or cheaper. I, th- I think there is certainly, and and we don't have to get real deep in this, but I think there's certainly a, an appeal. A big part of this hobby is you know creating. Like we're creators, we're artists. We mm-hmm. want to paint the minis. We want to create the tables. We want to, um, you know, we want to paint the terrain. Like we want to do these things, and and then you know you sort of create this world. And, and to me, like out of all of these things, um, AR is definitely the most compelling. The hollow tables, which I think. Who knows what could happen in 10 or 15 years? I mean, you could have mini projectors at the corners of the tables, right? Maybe the hand thing isn't an issue. Who knows how it works? Um, But I think that would be cool if you could kind of customize and like paint your own minis in like sort of a digital way, right? Skin them in different ways and like deploy them, right? I don't know. The VR thing, again, like too computer game adjacent. Um, But all right. So let's let's jump into our patron Q&A. Great round table. So... Uh, we have a question here from Icarus Ward. Say what? So speaking of the video games, I think this is relevant. Which soundtracks do you guys prefer more? The soundtracks from the new Hairbrain Schemes Battletech, uh, MechWarrior 2, or one of the other MechWarrior soundtracks? Uh, so Dom, why don't we start with you? What Which one is your favorite soundtrack? Um, the Hairbrain Scheme one is beautiful. I actually will listen to that. I've got like the link on YouTube. I'll just kind of put it as ambient music. It's very, very well done. So yep. simple answer from me, that one. Yep. Tom, what about you? I prefer DFA Wargaming soundtracks Ooh. over any oh. of them. Oh, that commercial <clears throat> mindset. Yeah. A plus. Mm. Well done. Yeah, uh, you can Always stream those. Um, <laughs> stream them on Amazon, guys. <laughs> but uh and Spotify. Um, and Spotify extreme. No, I I, I think Mech Warrior 2. For sure, I, I'm a big yeah, fan a of movie. yeah both the music and also even just like you know chip tune music in general and then yeah very mm-hmm. eight bit sixteen bit ah uh, yeah I mean the Mech Warrior two Mercs soundtrack uh absolutely fantastic in my opinion but yeah the Mech Warrior two soundtrack to my just, life yeah it's fantastic like you know if I'm going to the grocery store I just put it on like da yeah, knock um, stuff over in the aisle. Just yeah. like smash the box of cereal, right? <laughs> like when, when you would Punch when you would drop one of like those drop ships, you know, and it would like shatter. Yeah. All the old into like four <laughs> giant polygons, like oh, so yeah, good. yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so let's jump into our rapid fire, uh, which is which is Do a it. fantastic segment. Let's let's keep with the video game. Uh, so we talked about the soundtrack. Let's talk about the actual game itself. What what's your favorite? Battletech Mech Warrior video game all time. Mech, War- Mech Warrior 2. I still play it sometimes. Awesome. Dom? Mech, Mech Commander 2, and it's not even negotiable. I love that game okay. so much. That's a, cool game. That's a tough one for me. I, I'm going to go with Mech Warrior 4. I spent a little logged tons of hours in that game, but I will tell you there, there's a little known Battletech game. I think it's called Battletech 3025. It was an EA game. Uh, that came out. Yeah. It was a massive oh, multiplayer yeah. game. Do you remember that? Yeah, uh, and it I've was there, that. and then, then it yeah. just disappeared. It was absolutely phenomenal. You could you could pick the house, and then you would just log in and join, and you would yeah. wait to get queued Rings into a game. Yeah. And like the the borders of the different houses were constantly in flux. It was very yeah. very cool. Yeah. I think there was something to that. I think a massive multiplayer Battletech game uh, or Mech Warrior cool. game would yeah. be would be really cool. Um, yeah. All right. So speaking of which, um, speaking of mercenaries, let's talk about all the new mercenary packs that came out. Tom, we just recently, uh, I guess not so recently, but we did review the the Great F Legion one. That was the last of of five. We also looked at the Snords, a regulars pack. Um, what was the favorite new, your, your most favorite new mercenary lance pack? Uh, Snords, just because of the name. Snorgs. <laughs> uh, Dom, what about you? 
Um, I've got to go with a Kel Hounds pack. Love it. All right, next question. Uh, you're building a mech. You have some spare tonnage. Do you put on jump jets or more heat sinks, Tom? Oh, that is so hard. I have to give an answer. It depends um, on the mech, right? <laughs> oh, man. Oh. This is rapid fire, Dom. Oh. Uh, <laughs> jump jets. Dom, what about you? Yeah, heat jump sinks. jets as well. Love a oh. jump jet. I would go heat <laughs> sinks all day. All right, last rapid fire question. You're a Star League Defense Force Mech Warrior in 2784. Kerensky has given you the option of leaving with the Exodus or staying in the Inner Sphere. What do you do? Dom, you go first. Well, with the 2020 vision hindsight, I'm going nowhere near those sociopaths, so I'm staying in the Inner Sphere. But at the time, <laughs> I kind of understood why he did why you do it. So, yeah. Fair point. Tom, you stay <laughs> or you leave? leave. I'm staying. You're staying. Uh, yeah, it's it's like all the people. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not a cultist, so no, I get it. I would yeah, stay as well. Uh, I would stay as well. I'm an inner sphere guy at heart, as everybody knows. I'll all right, well, <laughs> Tom, are you ready for the render blender? Yeah. What everyone comes to the uh, show for? It is. Yeah. It is true. <laughs> I I drank a smoothie of like five minis earlier today to prepare. So today's today's render here. blender is the gunslinger oh. so mm. delicious Such. yeah all right we're gonna bring this guy up full screen here tom so we have three pictures yeah. courtesy of uh of anthony scroggins patreon um now obviously Shimmering the gunslinger himself. yeah he's a great dude um so obviously the gunslinger models already released uh, many of you already have it um, but here is three renders of this guy. Uh, we've got the sort of the front, the top, and then the delightful, delicious rear. Um, so let's start here with this, with this view here, Tom, and then awesome. you can guide us through. Uh, love this mech. I think I liked it, uh, when I looked at it in person too. So the first thing I'll say is that it looks like the mystery science 3000 robot is riding inside of an exo suit, <laughs> uh, which I love. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I could never look at him the same yeah. way again. I was like, oh, this thing's so intimidating. No. <laughs> no, it's awesome, though. Yeah, this is a really cool mech. I think they did a great job on the legs. Um, I really like the turtle shells mm. that they integrated for the um, tie-in with the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Um, <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah. But, uh, no, it's it's awesome, and, and it is super imposing. Um, I'm always a big fan of shoulder a uh, gauntlet covers. What's the term for that? When they have like the pauldrons and pauldrons. pauldrons yes. Yeah. Super cool pauldrons. No neck. Very beefy looking. What, let's get a pick of that a rear shot. That Instagram thirst pick as they call it. <laughs> so good. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, I, I don't even know if I'm allowed to look at this. My wife might get upset at me. <laughs> um, Do you remember when we thought these little things were, um, were like jump jet thrusters. And then somebody had to point out that they were actually the rear mounted pulse lasers, um, which is interesting because wow. they're like pointed straight down I, and they're not, they don't look like they rotate. Um, but maybe they just rotate out like this. Maybe it's like, it, they're blind spot monitors, you know, like, <laughs> beep, like beep, 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 beep. You're about to crash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, you, I mean, look, I, just, I love that, you know, he like terrible rear visibility, you know, yeah, but it's like an 80s like wish, robot wish. jocks toy, right? Like you press a button and they just fling up like pyong, and then you've got them like facing outwards like Billy the Kid, yeah, yeah. but reverse. Love it. Yeah, this is a super cool one. Yeah, the, the rear is nice on this one too. I like that it has an integrated um, CPU fan, probably high CFMs right there. I, I, I always, I think it's the rear window. That GPU uh, cooled off. Oh, that's yeah. It's a little port 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 <laughs> like color. Like there. looks looks out while he's shooting the elementals down on the bottom. I imagine it has like you can open it. Yeah, you know, get off my legs, you damn yeah. kids. <laughs> yeah, there's like elementals crawling up, and he's like dropping like rotten fruit at them, <laughs> like hot like hot oil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love it. Um, so this is a fantastic. Uh, design. I actually I, I brought one here because I'm I'm currently painting up um, uh, one of these guys uh, in sort of light colors, and it came out really really well. Um, lots of detail on it, you know, especially when you wash it. Or I used some speed paints on the on sort of the base coat, if you will. It grabbed a lot of the detail. 
And there's just tons of little things here, like you pointed out, to paint on it. Um, and from a loadout perspective, it's it's a fantastic mech too. You know, this twin Gauss, right? What is it for? Is it, are these medium pulse, Dom? I believe they're for medium pulse. I think pulse. they're extended range, I think. Yeah, depending on the I variant, think it's medium right? pulse on the back. And it's only, yeah, it's, I'm just looking now, it's just standard M lasers, actually. Oh, okay. Even better. Even I love those. Lasers. Yeah. And then, and then it's got some electronics on it as well, I think. Um, so it makes it a suitable sort of command mech. Um, mm -hmm. Very, very cool. But uh, so that's, that's that. That's, uh, yeah, that's a, the. Both in terms of uh, the, the builds and also the mini, I, I give it an A. An A? I like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good one. I was looking it's forward one. to this mech. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about it too. I think uh, I think it's a it's a good one, and, and glad to have it um, in the repertoire already. Hopefully, we'll we'll get that out in a battle report soon, um, with a sort of light facing off against unknown adversaries in the Ill Clan era. Uh, so that takes us to the end of this episode of Jump Point. Uh, so we'll wrap up there. A couple of things, if you haven't done so, uh, please subscribe, like, leave a comment. And if you want to help out more, you can head on over to Patreon uh, and join us there. It's as little as a dollar a month, uh, and that, uh, that gets you in on the action and everything helps out uh, and keeps the channel moving. So thank you to all of our patrons. Uh, also, if you're looking to get your hands on a, a brand new gunslinger, um, you could head on over to Ares Games and Minis. Uh, Ares Games and Minis has all the stuff you need to fuel your battle tech addiction uh, from the minis, the books, the dice, terrain. Uh, it's got the decals, fighting piranha graphics, all the good stuff is over there. So definitely check out Ares Games and Minis. Uh, that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. And of course, stay tuned. Always great stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming. Have a great day.